morning church family and friends. To those who might be joining our online service the first time today, it's my privilege this morning to warmly welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise and thank God that we are able to meet in this every Sunday morning. Although we are physically separated, we are one in the Spirit, and it is our prayer that we will be richly blessed as we shortly hear the word read and Jeremiah later expounds it to us. Let's come before God's throne of grace. Let's pray together, shall we? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for this quiet morning hour, for this time to draw aside from the cares of the world, for this time to be still and to know that you are God, to remember that nothing is hidden from your sight. Heavenly Father, we do with grateful and humble hearts remember that our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the eternal Word, became flesh and dwelt among us to glorify you and to reveal you to a world under judgment, that we might be redeemed from slavery to sin and freed from the burden of guilt. Father, in our Lord Jesus Christ is your promise founded that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We praise you for his precious blood shed for us at Calvary, for the knowledge of sins forgiven, and that we might be clothed in his righteousness. Father, grant us true repentance and the discipline to write your word on our hearts that we might not sin against you. O oh Lord, you know all things, every need, every care, every pain, every anguished thought, every lonely heart. In that knowledge, we especially lift up before you all those of our number who are ill, in pain, or recovering from illness, and we commit them to you. We commit to you all who are in turmoil of mind and in anguish because of unemployment, general poverty, parents continuously unable to properly feed their children, those who labor to ease the plight of orphans, street children, and the derelict of society, but who are struggling through lack of funding and support. We pray again for those dedicated and overworked doctors and nurses who struggle to maintain levels of service and health care. We pray for their perseverance and encouragement as they forsake family time to fulfill their calling. Lord, we thank you for giving us this wonderful country to live in. We lift up all of its people, the government at every level, the police force, the military, praying for your protection and guidance for all leadership, that they may understand and focus on their true role in our society, to be servants of the people. We pray that there might be a true awareness and an awakening to the real meaning of leadership, discipline and responsibility and a desire to address the real and urgent needs of the country and all its people. We pray for those of your children called to the mission field who labor to bring in the harvest. We pray that you would know their, that they would know your encouragement and your hand upon them in all of their endeavors. Father, we lift up before you all of your children throughout our land, our own church, our presiding bishop, our area bishops and ministers, and their families, all of our church councils. We pray for their encouragement, strength, and perseverance as they labor in the spread of the gospel. We thank you for Jomo and Brenda and their family, for Jomo's leadership and vision for our church. We pray for our own church council as they seek to administer the church's resources so that you might be glorified. We pray for those who, through the ministry of your eternal word in our church, might perhaps hear the gospel truth for the first time in their lives and acknowledge our Saviour as Lord of their lives. O oh Lord, for ourselves we pray as we approach the year 2021 that by your grace we may ever be found in your word, ever be found speaking with you, ever be found growing in knowledge and grace, ever be found striving after holiness and righteousness ever be found loving and serving you, 
ever be found honouring and glorifying you in thought, word and deed. Lord, we echo the disciples' request of the Lord Jesus. Lord, teach us to pray. For the sake of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Today's reading is taken from Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is in debt to us, and lead us not into temptation. This is the word of God. Good morning, church family. Are we still strong in the Lord? Are you still pressing on in the Lord? Ah, it was wonderful this week to see the Simpsons family, the family I haven't seen for a long, long time. It was wonderful to see them again. So this morning, I would like you to just, as we begin to think about things we need to be praying for, not only just for the remainder of 2020, but also for the things that we want to pray for 2021. I would like you to just put down some items that you would like to bring to the Lord in prayer at the end of this service. And we bow together and let me pray. Father, we thank you once again for your goodness and mercy, your kindness, your love, your protection and your provision. You are our almighty God, our loving Father. And even to those who doubt your love, we've seen how you have sustained us during these very, very difficult months when we were in lockdown and in hard lockdown. Father, we pray that you would help us as we journey in this journey of faith to fix our eyes on you, to connect our hearts with yours and to be passionate about mission as you are and to have compassion for the lost as you are. Guide us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, today it is our second talk on the short series on prayer. Remember, we started by asking, what are you praying for as we begin to think and plan for 2021? And I, I realized that I had assumed that you pray. And it dawned on me that some of you may not be praying. And the struggle is that you don't know how to do it. And so last week we looked at the Lord's Prayer and we pointed out a few very good ingredients of a wonderful prayer. And so this morning what we want to do is to use, is to take one tool that seeks to help you to learn how to pray. It is just that, a tool. So there are many of them out there in the market, tools that would help you to pray. And the one that I am using this morning, the one that I want to teach you this morning, is not because it is the best. It's just one that I thought it was simple, very practical, and it is the one that I used for many, many years as a young Christian in the Lord. So that's where we're going to go this morning. Now, interestingly, the passage that we're looking at, which is Luke chapter 11, and only the first four verses of the chapter. It's still the same Lord's Prayer, but it is a very, very short version of it. And in this passage, we are told that it was after they had watched Jesus praying that the disciples came to him and said, Lord, please teach us to pray. And I have no doubt in my mind that the disciples had seen Jesus pray, they had heard his prayers, and they had witnessed uh, miracles when Jesus prayed over people and things happened. And now they were ready 
to learn how to pray. And one of them said, teach us how to pray. And so, last week you remember, one of the points that I was presenting to you is the fact that prayer is learned. That no one is born a prayer warrior. We all start somewhere and we pray. Jesus taught the prayer, taught the disciples how to pray because he believed that they can learn, they can grow, and they can become better at it. And so if this morning you're one of those who said, I don't pray because I don't know how to pray, you're welcome. Join the club because really this series is aiming for people like you, people who would love to pray. But don't do it because they don't know how. They feel very inadequate to pray. And some of you, maybe you pray, but you struggle. You know, you pray here and there. And when you pray, you feel, oh, you're not doing a good job of it. And so you don't like to do it often because you think you're not doing a great job of it. Well, last week I said to you, there are no perfect prayers. But what we're going to do today is to really help you as well to learn this structure. And this structure will then guide your thoughts as you present your prayers to our God. So, the structure that we're looking at is called Acts. Acts, like, or as in the book of Acts. It's A, C, T, S, X for adoration, C for confession, T for thanksgiving, and S for supplication. These are the four points of this tool that I want to help you work on. And the first one is adoration. Adoration is simply just when we come to God, and we lift his name on high. We praise him for who he is and what he has done. So we come to him with an attitude of praise. We come to him with a, the, the attitude of worship. So we say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And in that way, we're praising him. We're saying things that God has done for us. And we, we, we say things that we've learned from scripture about God, that he's almighty, that he's all powerful. And we praise him for that. Adoration aligns your heart with God's heart. It really, it focuses on God. When you come to God with an attitude of adoration, you, it's God in front of you or it's God in front of the minds of your heart and you only see God and you praise him. That's what adoration is about. It keeps our eyes and our minds and our hearts firmly fixed on him as we praise him. You see, adoration reminds us that it is the name of the Lord and his work that matters most. Adoration reminds us that it is not about our name, but the Lord's name. It is not about us getting our will done on earth, but it is about us getting the Lord's will done on earth. It's all about our Heavenly Father, His honor, His praise, and His purposes. So we come, and it is as we come, and we lift our hearts, and we say we thank you, we thank you for your kingdom, Lord. And we pray that you would help us to be good and ambassadors of your kingdom because you're good, you're kind, you're loving, and you protect, you protect us, you provide for us. You love even those who don't love you. You, 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 you provide 
even to those who fail to say thank you to you as they are provided. And we adore you for who you are, our Heavenly Father. We want Him we, to rule over our, our lives, our hearts, and we want Him to rule over every human heart on the face of the earth. We say, Lord, help us to make your name, your wonderful name, your glorious name honored here on earth. Let your kingdom come. And we ask God to help us to bring his wonderful, glorious kingdom come into the upper highway area, into the greater Deben area, in the whole province of KZN, we ask God who is mighty and, and wonderful to help us bring his kingdom in, in our continent and in our world. We ask God to help us spread the great news of salvation to the very, very lost world. Adoration asks God to help us see him for who he really is. The almighty, ever-living God. We ask him to help us glorify his wonderful name here on earth and in the foreign lands. We ask him to teach us the policies of his wonderful kingdom so that we may be great ambassadors of his kingdom here on earth. We ask him to help us genuinely seek to glorify his name. Not for our own sake, but for his sake. Now my brothers and sisters in Christ, adoration teaches us that the first order of business is to submit our, our will. To the Lord's will. It is to submit our wandering hearts to our wonderful and stable God. It helps us to submit our restless minds under the will of God. Adoration helps us to see God for who he is and to see ourselves in the light of our God. When you come to God in prayer with this attitude of adoration, you would never, ever take God for granted because it will help you to always remember how great our God is. And that's the first one. It's adoration. It's simple. It really, when you read you, you, the Bible, you see how many times the, the writers of, of these books, how many times... They praise the Lord. And when you read your Bible, highlight those and use those lines as you learn this simple and yet wonderful skill of adoration. Next one is confession. Now, when you come to the mighty and holy God, it is right, it is proper, it is fitting for you and for me to come to God and acknowledge our sins before him. We come to God with a broken heart. And we confess our sins and we ask for forgiveness. And that's why Jesus taught his disciples to say, Forgive us our sins, for we forgive everyone who sin against us or who is indebted to us. You see, my brothers and sisters in Christ, there can never be a day when you come to God in prayer and say, Lord, today I had a fantastic day. It was brilliant. I have nothing to confess because I didn't commit any sin today. No, there is never a day like that. Never. Even on your very best day, you commit sin. Reflect on what you have done and what you have left undone. I love the way uh, we put it in our prayer books. I mean, it's not our, 
I pray it's the early father's prayers. And those men and women who first put these things together, who first put the prayer book together, which is so rich with prayers of confession and prayers. So, I mean, if you want to learn, that's another place where you could spend a lot of your time reading the prayers in the prayer book. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. But this is how they put together a prayer of confession. I mean, there are so many of them, and there are so many prayer books that have different confessions. I'm using the prayer book from our Rich SA um, book. They say, Almighty God, most merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. We have followed our own ways and our own desires, and we have neglected and broken your holy laws. Have mercy on us, Lord. Restore those who repent and confess their sins according to your promises declared in Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant merciful Father for his sake that hereafter we may live a righteous and obedient life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. You see it? It is very general because it's a corporate prayer. But you can see in this that if you understand your life and the things you do every day, there are so many things that you know God expects you to do. And you don't do it. And that's sin. There are things that God has specifically told you not to do. And you do them. And that's sin. And so when you come to the Lord either in the morning or midday or in the evening. And you have praised him. And now you want to confess your sins. Think long and hard about it. Yes, you can use a general prayer like this, but also you can be very specific because it's between you and God. Confession is about God and you. So the things that really trouble you, you can bring them to the Lord with honesty and with clarity. Lord, I struggle with anger. Lord, I struggle with lust. Lord, I struggle with greed. Lord, I struggle with pride. Lord, I struggle with gossip. Whatever it is, you can be very specific and ask God to help you get out of that hole that you find yourself in. Confess your sins to the Lord. The wonderful thing about it is this, that a confession for a Christian is not a about salvation. So in other words, the fact that you've sinned today, it doesn't mean you're no longer a Christian. We come to Christ and we confess our sins and, our, and, and Christ accepts us as God's children and we truly become God's children. And so when we sin and we confess our sins, we don't ask for salvation. No, that confession is about relationship with our Lord and our God. So we confess our sins because we want to have an open, honest, and healthy relationship with our God without this problem of hiding sin. So when we confess our sins, it's not about salvation. No, it's about relationship with the Lord. But if you're not a Christian, you confess your sin for the first time, it is salvation sin. Because you're saying, God, forgive me of these sins and please accept me as your child. And that confession is different to the one that we're talking about today. But if you've never ever come to Christ and confessed your sin and accept him as your Lord and Savior, that's the good place to start. But For you who are already serving the Lord and you love him, Confession is about just sustaining a healthy relationship with God. Maybe, maybe, you, you find yourself in a situation where you think, 
I, I, I'm not too bad, you know, because we tend to want to do that because we find it difficult to confess our sins because it, that sometimes makes us feel like we're worse of sinners. No, the issue here is not about being good or bad. It's about the fact that you acknowledge your sins because you sin and the Lord knows your sins. And so you come to him and you say, Lord, here's my struggle. Please work with me. But you come and you're honest with the Lord. Confession of sin, asking for forgiveness, and the willingness to forgive others are true marks of biblical conversion. If you have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and you've tasted God's forgiveness, then naturally you should be willing to forgive others. And the Lord's Prayer teaches, forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. That you cannot on this side be willing and wanting God's grace and mercy and forgiveness, but on the other side you refuse to forgive other people. God graciously treats us in a way that pulls us to him. He forgives us of our sins and we have that relationship restored. And so we do the same with people who sin against us. Those who have hurt you, it is right to forgive them. You remember last week I said to you, we must forgive them even if they don't ask for forgiveness, we must forgive them because the Lord has forgiven us. Forgiveness restores relationship. And sometimes, yes, indeed, the relationship is so broken that it cannot be restored. But what it does, it clears the air. You've forgiven that person and it's behind you. But within God's children, in the church of God, we shouldn't have people holding grudge against each other. We are God's children. We must forgive one another. Because it is as we do that that the world will see the grace of God in us. And that will be very attractive to the world. It's adoration. It's confession of sin. And then it's thanksgiving. And this is so important. Thanksgiving is so important because this is the moment where you look, lift your eyes to the Lord and you say, thank you. Thank you for good health. Thank you that I can actually pray. Thank you that I'm strong enough. I am able to go to work. Thank you that I have appetite for this food. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the many blessings that you've showered upon my life. Thanksgiving is critical in our life as Christian. And all of us, all of us, with no exception, have received blessings from the Lord. All of us. Yes, maybe, just maybe, you find yourself in a horrible situation. You're not part of, maybe you left your country you came to South Africa hoping for employment and you find yourself in a horrible situation where you're stuck and maybe feel like you've even been trafficked and you feel you have absolutely nothing to be thankful for. Or maybe you're going through a very messy divorce and you're angry and you're bitter and you feel there is absolutely nothing to be grateful for. I don't know your situation, but I think if you took a moment and you think long and hard, you would find that there are some blessings that God placed along the way for you. Your heart might be broken and filled with fear. And you find it hard to give thanks. In fact, you find it hard even to pray because every time you want to pray, you just want to cry. God understands your pain. And God is with you in your pain. 
I want to encourage you to lift up your eyes above your current situation and look up to the Lord and say, thank you, Lord, for good health. If you're enjoying good health. If you have roof over your head, thank the Lord for it. If you're going through a rough time, but you have a friend or a person who's just walking alongside you, why don't you take time to give thanks to the Lord for that person? You're unemployed and you are pushing your CVs around, but there's someone who's helping you with money to make copies, to, to provide data so that you can go online and do things. Why don't you take a moment and thank God for that person? And for many of us in our church family here at CCH, we are abundantly blessed. In all honesty, as members of Christ Church Hillcrest, I don't know one of us who doesn't have a roof over his or her head. In fact, I know that the Lord has blessed us way beyond our basic needs. And so we have so much more to be thankful for. Or well, take time. Give thanks to the Lord. Look around. I mean, the screen you're watching as you're listening to this sermon, that is a tool that God has provided for you. Why don't you give thanks for it? Give thanks. Find things that you can pin them and lift them up to the Lord and say thank you. Because it is as we do that that we learn to count our blessings. Oh my God. I know that I am blessed beyond measure. And I know that many of you are. But do we thank God enough for it? I don't know. You know. You know. Thanksgiving. Wonderful. The last point is supplication. Now you've come to God. You've praised him for who he is. You've acknowledged the fact that you're a sinner who needs God's grace every day. And you've given thanks to God for everything that he has done for you. And now it's the moment for you to bring your personal wish list to the Lord. Supplication simply means ask or beg for something. So when we come to God and we pray in this section of prayer, we bring our request to God. As in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus <laughs> taught the disciples and they must ask God to give them their daily bread and lead and ask the Lord to lead them not into temptation, but to deliver them from evil. This is when we come to God and we say, Lord, please, please. We're struggling with school fees. And our children have been in private school and we've been abundantly blessed in many ways and we've managed to keep our children in these schools. But now we're struggling. Lord, would you please open doors for us to start new businesses so that we may be able to finance our children's education. So that we may be able to pay for the bond or that car or, or whatever it is that you want to bring to the Lord. This is your moment to bring things to God. And we're all going through a whole lot of things. And there's so many things we can bring to the Lord. Bring them. Bring them all. Ask for God's wisdom. For God's guidance. As you plan for 2021. It is here in supplication where we pray for other people where we pray for our country, where we pray for our leaders, and we pray that the Lord would, would provide um, a cure for this COVID and, and many other diseases like cancer that have killed so many people. It is here that we pray for that neighbor you know who's struggling or for that friend who's going through a terrible time. This is when we lift them to the Lord. Supplication, we, we bring things to God. You know, think about our missionaries, men and women who left their country and they've gone to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and some of them in very difficult 
uh, situation. It is here that you lift them by names to the Lord and ask God to protect them and to bless their ministry. And my brother and my sisters in Christ, remember, when you come to God and you pray, you must also come with expectation that God will answer your prayers. It mustn't be just like, oh, it's something you've got to go through. All right, I'm going to go through it. And then you go, woo, 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 and you finish. No, you come and you lift these things to the Lord, but you do so with expectation that God will answer your prayers. Trust him for the result and prepare your heart to receive God's answers to your prayers. And yes, as again, Christians of Save the Lord long before us have taught us that. That sometimes God says yes when you ask. Sometimes he says no. And both yes and no, we must accept them because God is all knowing. He knows what's good for us. And I look back now and I remember and I look at the things sometimes that I ask God for. And I say, Lord, thank you. For not giving me that. Now I can see. If I had received that. It probably would have taken me. Way way away from you. But also sometimes God says. Not now. He doesn't say no. But he's not saying yes now. And he says wait. Wait upon the Lord. And when it is right. The Lord will answer your prayers it's a simple tool isn't it and whenever you pray just remember the book of acts adoration confession thanksgiving and request supplication and i hope i hope that you would not just be encouraged but that you will take a moment after this and pray are they using this tool or any other tool that you have? But that you would spend time praying as you did last week. Let's bow our heads together and pray. Your mercy amazes us. Your grace captures our heart and your patience is amazing Lord we thank you that you you are so gracious that many of us hardly ever come to you in prayer and yet you faithfully wait for us to come I pray that this morning as you see many people coming to you in prayer, oh Lord, that they may feel your hand on their shoulders, that they may feel your presence, that they may know you are with them as they pray. In Jesus' name, amen.